Today, I'm traveling to the darkest place on Earth by staying in this glass house, so at midnight, we can see this. Hi, I'm Leo, and you'll never believe what I legally named this thing. Oh, and by the way, I'm giving five new subscribers the same thing I did at the end of this video. So if you watch till the end, subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Leo and tell me what I named that object. I could be personalizing one for you too. Our journey begins here in Auckland. I was taking a walk and decided to look at the stars one night. And that's when I saw it. This amazingly bright star that seemed to call my name. But I couldn't figure out what it was. So I googled whether you can name stars, and sure enough, you legally can. I was going to name that star. I just had to find the coordinates. So I got some equipment. By day two, I came back with binoculars, found nothing. On day three, I came back with the telescope, but got the same results. It was gone. Maybe it was because I couldn't focus the telescope. Maybe it was because it was a small telescope. Maybe it was because it was daytime. I'm not a scientist. F this telescope. It had been a week of searching with no luck. I couldn't find the star I so desperately wanted to name. And I kind of thought the journey ended there. And that's when it hit me. We were in the city, a place with too much light pollution, dust and fog. So what if we went to somewhere dark? Like this place. It has no light pollution and at times you can even see the southern lights. Aurora Borealis. The bad news is that it's 400 kilometers away by car after a plane ride which is a thousand kilometers away. <sighs> <laughs> About to fly. Not looking fantastic right now. Let's hope nothing gets too wet. Beautiful. So we're on our way to Christchurch to see the star because they have the telescope there and the darkest sky reserve in the country. Also the southern hemisphere. How would you do that? <laughs> our bags to the nearest car rental which was a 20 minute walk we've been walking for forever these people said it is right by the airport and then started driving 400 kilometers would take about four hours so my friend and i took turns at least that's what he said <laughs> i had never driven this far ever before and honestly i was kind of nervous what if we got lost what if we ran out of gas what if we saw this We had come across a lake which spanned as far as the eye could see. And if I didn't know any better, I'd think I was at the gates of heaven. After 400 k's of driving, we did it. Oh man. This is unbelievable. Do you believe this? I believe it smells like shit out here. <laughs> so finally getting to see the place. Woo! Super excited, man, to be this honest. It looks amazing. Like, look at it already, bro. I mean, like... Is on... I think this is for couples. Well, we're a couple. Just take the hot tub. The first night we stayed there, the stars looked immaculate. The problem was when I tried to capture the images, everything was still too far away, so I couldn't get a good look at them until I created this technique. Step one, get a camera. Step two, shove camera into eye of binoculars. Step three, profit. I mean, look at it. So I thought finding the star would be a breeze, but fog began to cover everything up that night and things began to get harder to see. I stayed up to watch the sunrise, thinking wishfully I'd somehow find the star. But of course, by morning, aside from the sun, there was nothing else that would be shining that day. Hey man, better luck next time, alright? I really wanted to find it, just so I could name it. I would have named it something special, something close to me. Something I feel every single day. Damn, I mean, I didn't know you felt like that about it, but... You know what, why don't we just, why don't we just stay another night? 
Let's find it. Let's find the star. Until I realized there was one more place we hadn't went to. This place, the Dark Sky Reserve. We got our tags which shined only red light to keep minimum light pollution a thing. We strapped on our extreme weather jackets as temperatures got below freezing. I don't know what to expect, but I know what I'm looking to find. And I'm going to name that star. It lo it's looking pretty crazy though. It's hella dark. That's all I can say. Hella cold, yeah. And we set off to look through this. A big ass telescope. Boom. Not like the one I had in Kmart. <laughs> All I had to do was use my camera technique and... Oh my goodness. If only I could find that star. I could give it a name that it so desperately deserves. I wish I could give you a happy ending. We set out to film the sudden lights and the battery died, leaving the footage corrupted after five hours. And we had ran out of time. This place wasn't even as romantic as I thought. Elvin snoring and farting wasn't my idea of love. But before midnight, we decided to do one more time lapse, and something amazing happened. Did you see that? On the top right corner of your screen, a shooting star, and I saw it live and made a wish. And when I did that, I looked at the time, the time said to be the most powerful time to make a wish, 11, 11 p.m. As if by magic, she appeared right there. I tracked the coordinates that night and registered my star legally. It was official. And by the time we got home, I'd receive a certificate to prove it. I've always had a fascination with the stars, since I looked up and saw those shiny things looking back down at me. I just never thought the journey would take us here, out of our city, to somewhere where the lack of man-made light gave way for the natural light to shine. And it was breathtaking. The journey, passing by untouched land, Lakes that looked like Bob Ross paintings come to life, and stars so far away they made me realize how little we are in the grand scheme of things. It's almost comforting, realizing nothing really is that big of a deal anyway either. These supermassive stars, they are going to live very, very short lives. They are only going to live for a few million years at most, because the more massive a star is, the faster it dies. They'll have really short, but really productive lives as well. Now if you look in the night sky, you might just see these nuts. Really? Two and a half thousand kilometers for a these nuts joke? I would have named it something close to me. Something I feel every single day. <laughs> oh my, my god! god. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, if you're one of the lucky people I chose, I will name something after you. So hit me up. <laughs>